from dead people rising from the dead, from angels in the battlefields, from strange and cruel events in World War I. This is the dark history of World War I. Attack of the Dead Man. Imagine it's 4 a.m. in the morning and you try to attack this fortress and you bombard it with poisonous gas. And you believe that everyone's dead, you know, poisonous gas is very deadly, it burns your skin and you die from the inside and out, it burns the outside and the inside and you know, no way do it be anyone surviving. So you charge the area and then the dead rise up and charge you back. This was an event called the Attack of the Dead Men, unofficially, uh, because of how, what happened. The Germans attacked the Russians with a gas attack, and their flesh was burnt, uh, they were spitting blood, there were pieces of lungs coming out of them, and, well, even when they were suffering, they still was managed to stand up and charge at the Germans, and the Germans were terrified because they saw that zombies or the dead were rising up and attacking them. And even through, even through the Germans had more troops, uh, they ran away because they were just so terrified of, you know, zombies coming to attack them. The Angels of Moons. Now this is a very interesting event. Imagine you're in a trench and suddenly you read a journal and it says that there are angels protecting you and that you were favored by the gods. Well, that's a huge morale boost, right? And these rumors started circulating uh, by 1915. Uh, yeah. In a British newspaper, it revealed that this bowman and this, this divinity called St. George uh, was with them, was with the British, and was protecting them uh, from harm and from protection. And then they saw that this divinity was protecting them and favoring the British. And St. George is not just some random divinity, it was the divinity that was used or one of the divinities invoked during the Crusades. And that invoking him also makes it that you will have victory. Number one victory royale. And this was extremely hopeful for the soldiers that to see that he was with them. And it was a little bit the same with the French as well. Uh, they had visions of Joan of Arc. Uh, so they they all had, you know, these, these morale boosts on all sides. And for the Angels of Moons, it was actually just coming from a fictional story that was written. And they kind of took the fictional story and made it into a real story uh, that has actual facts and not just, you know, a fiction. It was really turned into reality. So, you know, I guess that this divider is very different. And boom, it becomes reality. And, you know, huge morale boost for the troops. And it became to a point where even believing that this thing was a false, that it was a hoax, that would be unpatriotic. You had to believe, all of them believe that this was the truth and that the British were protected by God. The Castle Mountain Internment Camp. We know the Banff National Park. It's an amazing place. It's a national park in Canada, but the reality behind it is quite terrifying. During World War I, there was the Castle Mountain Internment Camps where about 8,000 internees were put into all kinds of different camps, including the Castle Mountain internment camps. Inside it, many Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainian Canadians were in there and were working for 25 cents an hour while having all of their goods stripped from them. Now, why were the Ukrainians in these camps? Well, during World War I, the enemy was the Germans and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And part of Ukraine was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which means that the Ukrainians were the enemies, even if they were patriotic towards Canada or anything, you know, they were the enemy and they had to be captured. After we capture them, we will use them to build infrastructure. And that's what happened in the Castle Mountain internment camp. Um, these people will be paid 25 cents a day and forced to do very, very difficult tasks while having all their goods and wealth taken from them. So they don't have anything, they get paid 25 cents a day uh, and they would build things like um, the lake launch, they'd be cutting park trails, building tennis court, uh, build, building the Banff ice park, uh, building the sidewalks. 
So if you go to the Banff National Park, maybe a lot of the infrastructure was built by forced labor by the internees at Castle Mountain internment camps. And that the structure you were standing on in the park was built with blood, sweat, and tears. Bloody Christmas. Imagine the year is 1914. You are in the trench and all the soldiers are miserable. They're depressed, they're sad. And well, you decide to make a Christmas truce. You know, all the Germans come out and all the allies come out and they play soccer and you know, they exchange gifts and you know, it's peace for a day. And I, I guess it's a beautiful event, the Christmas truce. And you try again the next year in 1915 with the Canadians. And your people come out and they get shot. This is the event of the Christmas truce of 1915, or more so, a bloody Christmas. The year is 1915, on December 25, on Christmas Day. And well, the Canadians weren't that happy. There are many reasons, and not, not, not notably the gas attacks that are extremely terrible and horrifying. And the surgeon was giving instructions to not allow a Christmas truce again. Or, well, they weren't in Battlefield, but they were instructed that they couldn't allow another Christmas truce. And when it happened, the Germans, you know, they had a box of cigar. One guy revealed a box of a cigar, and they came out, and they wanted a Christmas truce. Until they were shot. <laughs> and, you know, the Germans also responded with gunfire, and that was the end of the Christmas gathering. So, uh, he was hands up, and boom, got shot. Um, and that was the end of the Christmas truce of 1915. It was much, there wasn't much of a truce, it was more of a bloody Christmas. So yeah, don't make peace with Canadians in wartime, because we're not so nice. The 1915 Vanceboro International Bridge bombing. This is one of many terrorist attacks done by the Germans. Now what happened was that this guy was paid $700 by Franz van Papen, also known as the Vice Chancellor, well, he, he, he will become in the future the Vice Chancellor of Germany under the, the mustache painter guy. So, this guy during World War I, so that, that was before he was, was Vice Chancellor, he paid $700 to a guy so that he commits a terrorist attack. His goal was to bomb a bridge called the Vanceboro International Bridge. It's a bridge between Canada's New Brunswick province and uh, the state called Maine. And when he went there, it was very, very cold. And while placing the bomb, he got frostbite. And after he detonated it, it did minor damages because of how cold it is. Uh, and he was captured, also captured. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave me a like, leave the notifications and subscriptions on so you can watch my next video for next week, which is the dark history of World War II. And I'll see you guys next week.